What are some things you'd only know by growing up poor? Pre-cut Christmas trees are free on Christmas Eve. I remember the Christmas tree hunt on Christmas Eve was like our little family tradition. We would drive around in the evening looking for stores that still had trees sitting out front. Nine times out of ten, when we would ask about the tree we were interested in, they would say just take it, glad to get rid of them by that point. Every year we had a perfectly beautiful tree, and it was exciting to find perfect trees for free, and then stay up late decorating it with homemade glitter pine cones and candy canes. If you send a bad check to the utilities company on a Friday you have power for the weekend. And if it gets returned, you still have a week or so until they realize it. Back in the 90s I would deliberately put my bank account into overdraft, so I could have a few hundred bucks to meet some needs. It was a strategy. We should write a book on how to be poor. Most gas station attendants will not stop a small child from stealing toilet paper from their bathrooms. Who knew? Edit thanks for the silver this isn't something I had to do a lot, but it happened from time to time, my mom took excellent care of me we just fell a bit short sometimes. I used to work at a gas station. I looked the other way for a lot of shit. Everyone is struggling, and I don't give a shit if a kid steals a candy bar or gets a free ICE. One man didn't have enough money for a lighter, so I said wait till I turn around. Go walk to the door, light the cig, throw the lighter on the ground, and walk out. IDK about in other states, but in MN they can't shut your power off during the winter because of the danger of someone freezing to death in their house. So that was a good time to try to catch up on some other bills you are way behind on too. They just passed the law in Arizona where it is the other way around starting next summer due to it being 100 plus all day and night regularly. Everybody is curious to see how it is going to play out. They passed it because an elderly woman with Alzheimer's depended on her children to pay it for her, when they forgot she had no AC for the summer and died consequently. Government cheese, doing your laundry in a bathtub using only cold water BC the gas was shut off, trying to spend the night at your friend's house BC they had food and a warm room, thanks Nikki, loving going to school because you could at least eat there, trips to Goodwill for new clothes, showers at school because at least three water was warm. Being made fun of because you smelled like kerosene, having lice, and no one doing anything about it, going to school with bruises BC your parents took their shitty decisions out in you. I'm so grateful to a handful of people that saw potential in me, I went to college, got a great job, and broke the cycle. Thanks Tom and Tony. That sometimes your parents sacrifice everything they have, including their sanity just to see you happy. And you only learn later in life the soul-crushing existence of poverty. Then you wonder how they managed to do so much with so little. For rails. I was 30 when I realized what mom meant when she told us kids to go ahead and eat because she ate in the kitchen. Oh that breaks my heart. Pizza nights are the best birthday present you could ever fucking get. A whole pizza, ordered exactly how you like it, and you get to have more than one slice. When I was about 10 my older brother was working as some kind of technician, and he secretly took me along on a trip to check some equipment in a different city. We had Pizza Hut for dinner two nights in a row with the company card, and I remember being in absolute heaven. Food Stamp Paper Change When I was a kid, if you used food stamps they would give back the change in food stamp form. My mom was too proud to publicly use them so she would make up a reason to leave, and I would have to pay using them I was 11 or so. She did it every time dot I had to learn to keep my head up. My mother would send me into the store with $21 food stamps. I would stand at the register and get the 95 cents change for each 5 cent gum, one at a time. They figured out what I was doing and started laughing, but they let me do it. The shame was not nearly as bad as dealing with mama without her methadone. I was 11 too. On the bright side, nothing embarrasses me now. Witness to the adage how much you really do have. Major fire wiped out several hundred million dollar homes. Heat generated left rubble of two-story homes only feet high. 
Families devastated. I still see the face of one man so completely shattered, I wondered if he would live to be able to rebuild. I later was in the command post area when I was approached by a young girl and her father. The dad couldn't speak English, so the girl would translate. My family wants to know if this is where we can bring donations for the people whose houses burned down? To my working knowledge, none had been established at that point. Her father talks, she translates, can we leave it here? Many roads are being closed and we're not familiar with this part of town. I walk with them to their car, a much older beater, the mom and a couple of siblings in it. Dad opens the trunk and together, we all bring out couple cases of water, canned and dry food, adult and child clothing, some used toys and prepared food. Almost listed when each kid handed me their toys. Little girl, we have so much stuff and we want to share with those families. Not to ask their parents for stuff. I felt so guilty asking for clothes or other school needs. It also made me dread class art projects, especially in non-art classes. Yeah it's only 20 bucks worth of crafts, but that's money we need for real life. What hunger really is. I remember waiting for my dad's payday for the grocery shopping trip and being absolutely ravenous when the food got there. I don't remember which day of the week it was but we'd go on the day that the most free samples were available. Friday for us. At the time it just seemed like a normal thing to do. Looking back, it was the only time we got to try things like the higher-end frozen pizzas. I know now how much it hurt my mom not to be able to buy any of the things we got to try. This is where being poor in farm country is a little bit easier than being poor in a city. I worked on a dairy farm when I was a kid, and I got to take home a gallon of milk every day. We got deals on chickens and even got a half cow and half pig on the cheap. It was rare for us to be hungry, but everything was cooked from scratch and we all did what we could to contribute. All did what we could to contribute. Having community and neighbors to swap chores, meals, and errands saved us. When we were flush, we'd host meals. When we were in need, we were taken care of. I think the nuclear unit is a really tough way to live, and it saddens me to think that people don't give to take from know their neighbors and communities.